Thanks, you guys. I'm so excited for this cake. My mom used to make an amazing pineapple upside down cake all the time, so I haven't had it in a while. It, yeah, anything with pineapple is yummy. So I guess I'll just start talking since we don't have much time. <laughs> I'm recording this. Sean wanted me to try, so we'll, we'll see how it goes. I hope you don't mind being in the background. Okay, so I wrote down a few things. I'm going to start with photos. And I wrote down a few things that are interesting facts about me that you might be surprised about. My baby picture. Oh, what a cute I'll pass, let's see. I'll pass this one around at the same time. I have a twin sister. That's my mom and my sister and I. My, sis my sister and I were born on June 30th, late in the evening, like 8.50. Um, three months premature, and my mom did not know that she was going to have twins, if you can believe that. I think some of you know. So the ultrasound only picked up one heartbeat. And so my poor mother went into labor early and then was, you know, she wasn't ready, and then she had two. Oh <laughs> Surprise! God. So I was in an incubator for the first three months of my life. Yeah. Um, so that's interesting. I met, I met my biological dad. I met my biological dad when I was 29. That's a whole nother story, but it's something interesting about me. This picture is um, my grandma and my twin sister and I, my grandma Mimi. We grew up next door to her for, um, for the first part of our life. And <laughs> yeah. oh, I didn't show that one. Screen. That's baby Erin. So Grandma Mimi, her picture's coming around. She, um, we grew up next door to her and my grandpa, my mom's parents. Um, I think until we were seven, and she was like major, major influence in my life. And um. She was a devotee of Sai Baba, if you can believe that, the Afro Sai Baba. And the first time I found myself in India, I was at his ashram unintended. So I think it's in my lineage somewhere. Um, you know, all of, all of the beautiful things from India. Okay, here's a picture of me and my little brother. I was probably like 10 in this picture. So... I'm guessing he was born when I was nine, so it looks maybe like I was 10 or 11. That's TJ. I'm gonna skip that photo. I'll show it here. Family. Okay, I'll pass that one around. Adopted dad, my mom remarried when we were four, and the man in this picture adopted my twin sister and I. He was more in love with us and wanted to be a dad than he was I believe in love with mom. I don't want to say that. That's just so sweet. He wanted to be a dad. So that lasted for about, um, they were married from four till we were nine and got divorced. Okay, you might not know that I was a cheerleader. <laughs> and I wasn't a very good cheerleader. I made it two years, but the last time I tried out, I did not make the team. I was just a nice person, so they, so I think I made the team for two years, but I really wasn't good. Like, I was terrified to be on the top of the pyramid. I like, wasn't strong enough to be on the bottom, but I had fun. Here's my twin sister and I graduating high school. Note the very big eyebrows. <laughs> um, my twin sis and I were student. I was student vice president, and she was student council president. Um, so that was always fun. She always loved leadership, but I just sort of followed. Um, I graduated from college from Flagstaff, Arizona, um, at NAU, with a degree in um, organizational communications and public health. My twins and I both went to the same college. Um, we were very different in college. I never lived. I was never in a sorority, but 
um, she she was like resident of her sorority and I was more like snowboarder crew and the crew that even though I didn't smoke pot like my whole crew was smoking a lot of pot we, we you know it was like the outdoor crew rather than than the sorority crew so I drink a lot of beer <laughs> Um, let's see. Okay, I've got a few here. Oh, that picture was actually Boulder, Colorado, with one of my best girlfriends, Dale. The one you can see the Flatiron Mountains. So after college, I moved to Boulder. And then I moved to Breckenridge for a little bit of time. So some of you might have met Danielle. She's been in the office before. Let's see. When I, um, after I moved, from, I was in Boulder for a couple of years, and then I moved to San Francisco, California. My grandmother, who you saw a picture of, she was living in San Francisco as a young woman, uh, selling flowers um, in the Fisherman's Wharf on a flower cart. So I always dreamed of what it might be like. And then I was working in Boulder, I met a gentleman who, a gentleman, a guy, um, who, lived in San Francisco, so he inspired me to move there. And I lived there for five years um, and I worked for a company. I worked, did event planning for an investment bank, pretty much, and got to travel all over the world. And uh, after maybe four years there, well, one of the events we planned was, um, I did a couple events, one in London and one in Paris, and I coordinated with a gal named Emily Martin, who lives in, um, who lives in France. So she, at the time she was living and working from the London office and we were soul sisters, we hit it off. And she came out to visit me for a Thanksgiving and she said, Karen, um, why don't you come to France for the summer? She had gotten stressed out at the job and quit and decided to move back to France where she grew up and um, run her father's villa rental management company. And so I was about to turn 30, and I said, you know what? I think that's a good idea. So I gave my notice to my boss. I, I said, I want to take a summer sabbatical was my plan. And she said, pretend that we have not had this conversation because you're going to be laid off, and our whole t we're being bought by a different company, and you're, you're going to be um, laid off, and the whole team is, and you'll get a seven-month settlement. So we paid for seven months. Like, <laughs> Thank you, universe! So I spent the first, I think, two and a half months in the south of France with my friend Emily. And then from there, along with uh, another gal that was laid off, my friend Erica, we, we met and traveled for seven months. We went to, um, well, I went all over during that time, all over Europe, but uh, Spain and Italy and Portugal, and I met my friend Erica in Morocco, no, on the, in Spain to go over the Strait of Gibraltar, I think. We headed over to Morocco and then Egypt and then Ghana, Africa, South Africa, um, Mauritius, and then back through Europe, Samoa, and Brazil on that, that trip. And uh, one of the things that I'm most proud of. I wrote down a couple things that I thought I think it's neat to share what we're most proud of in our life. But one of them is making um, friends with my African brother Stephen, Stephen Donkwa. And um, while I was there in Ghana, Africa, I I met him and um, learned about some of the work that he did with rescuing kids off the streets. He was a, um, he was trafficked as a child and sold into childhood slavery. He didn't have it so bad, he had to work in a restaurant. But a lot of the kids do in Ghana, you probably heard Oprah talking about it. But here's some of the kids, this is an old picture. But um, eventually it turned out that I founded a nonprofit called Learn, Grow, Lead, and most of you guys know about that. Learn, Grow, Lead. Um, so I'm a co-founder of that, but it, it, it happened very grassroots and organically just through my relationship with students these kiddos. And um, I just started sending money and asking friends and family for my birthday to help. And so the mission is just to get these kids in school mostly. And um, we've also started a farm that many of you know about um, that's organic farming. And the goal, the idea is there that any funds 
raised from selling crops will help them become more sustainable and self-sustainable and that they can pay for their own school fees. So that's not really happening yet. It's like not that easy, but that's the goal. And then last year we started an orphanage, which my other co-founder, Annika, really fundraised and paid for. But there's an orphanage class guest house that we started. So if anyone wants to go to Ghana, I've got places for you to stay. Um, I think that comes later. Well, I'll show this. I guess, you know, one of the themes in my life is just service. I think that that really resonates for me. And this is a woman in India that I met named Mohana. And I helped her set up a flower tour business. That she sells flowers outside of the temple. And at this particular temple, you have to wear flowers. You don't have to, but it's nice to wear flowers in your hair if you're a woman before you go in. And so that's what she does. And she ran after me one day saying, sister, sister. Your sorry is on all wrong. <laughs> she, she, she helped me out, and then we became friends. Then I just saw her on my last trip to India in December. So I helped her set up a little business where she takes people on tours of the local flower market to make a little extra money. Oh, this was for Kevin, but he's not here. And, and maybe also for Steven. But I've, uh, I used to try and surf. I don't anymore. But that's in Costa Rica, but I've also surfed in like Biarritz, France, and South Africa, Jeffreys Bay, like some famous spots. Um, this is a picture from my, I don't know which journey, on the Great Wall of China. I like to travel. I probably, I don't know how many countries I've been to, but a lot. This is one of my other best girlfriends, um, and it was a picture of of um, us drinking Dom Perignon <laughs> in, um, in St. Bart's, the island of St. Bart's. Her brother um, is and was really, really wealthy. And um, we used to get to go on all these great trips when I lived in San Francisco. So she was my roommate and friend in San Francisco. We traveled all over in his private jet. And, and uh, yeah, I've had a really um, extravagant life in San Francisco working for an investment bank and flying all over the world. And, yeah, so and staying in very things. beautiful places and house seats because we had junk budgets. We had to spend or lose. So um, that was just, I thought that was a funny picture when I was going through pictures. Just Dom Perignon. Those were the Dom Perignon days. <laughs> um, okay. I was once married. This is Graham McCann. My name was Aaron McCann. He is a lovely, lovely, funny, sweet human being. Such a good heart. We weren't a good match, um, but his mom and I are best friends. She's one of my best friends. She just sent me a gift yesterday, and this is a card she made for me. So that was a sweet gift um, from that relationship. So that's where you saw that, but that's a card. This is my um, for my my bridal party. So all my best girlfriends, and then his sisters here. But we did um. We did a Mexican theme. We loved Mexican food. We were trying to keep the budget down. And it happened to snow on our wedding day. It doesn't snow in Arizona. It snowed and rained, and it was like awful. So we ended up inside instead of outside drinking margaritas. Might have been an omen. I was married two and a half years. <laughs> um, I started working at Disney. Let's see, I think, I don't know what year, but I worked for Disney about seven years. And here's a picture of me at Disneyland with my nephew, me and Minnie Mouse. Um, I did advertising sales, so I worked for Disney Channel and Radio Disney doing advertising sales. And that was a great job for a little while. And then I grew out of it. <laughs> um, one more picture of some kids. These are... Um, Kids that are, well, it's not orphans, not the right, foster kids in, um, in Los Angeles. And I would take a group of them to Disneyland a couple times a year, organize tickets and all that. Um, what do I want to say? I missed something. Um, Disneyland. Oh, so after, while Graham and I were getting, this is my quick Ayurveda story. While Graham and I were going through divorce, um, I found a class at the Chopra Center, a course called emotional healing and so I did that and I learned about Deepak Chopra's astrologer probably one of many astrologers 
and I had my first session with him and uh, a great guy named Brent Beckvar and uh, he told me, he said, do you know about Ayurveda? It's in your chart. I see you with food and entertainment and he said, go pick up this book by Dr. Ladd, um, the Complete Home Remedies book, so I did and um, like two days later or so, I saw a flyer that he was speaking at Santa Monica College that same weekend, so I went. And of course, if you've seen Dr. Laud, you immediately fall in love with Ayurveda. If, you, if your heart is open at all, you will fall in love. And like I did, I decided to study Ayurveda, and I was enrolled in a class like the next month. So that was pretty cool. And while I was studying, Moss was one of my teachers. I stu studied at his... Um, studio in Los Angeles through Kerala Ayurveda. Had all kinds of great teachers that would change out every month. And um, But I said, Bang and Botanicals, I got the student discount. I said, I want to work there someday. I don't want to be a practitioner, but I cut out their logo and put it on my dream board and never did anything about it. Normally I would do something about it. I just sort of put it on my dream board and let it go. So that's pretty funny. And um, and when it was time for me to leave Disney, I, um, it was, you know, I got to the point where I was talking about Ayurveda and doing these things, and my coworker, I remember, she's like, you have such a third eye. I'm like, yeah, you do too. <laughs> yeah, third eyes, mine's just more open. But I remember just being ready. It was time. Just time. I was out of integrity, really. It didn't feel good to show up anymore, so I wasn't happy to be there, and also I wasn't yeah, wanting to do the work. So I gave two months' notice, and I was turning 40, so I traveled again. I did my my big 40th birthday trip. I happened to have I had a, a $10,000 um, bonus. I got paid a lot of money at Disney, and I and I said, okay, I'm going to travel. I sold my car and got rid of everything, and um, went back to same some of the same. Um, countries and that bonus actually by the way this is how we know everything is divine order I got a bonus it, I don't think it was all ten thousand dollars but I got a big bonus and then they found out that they um, had short paid me they weren't paying me enough so I got another check and then my tax accountant found out I paid ten thousand dollars more than I should have the year before so I got this chunk of money I'm like oh my god I'm, I'm really gonna do this 40th thing again like I did when I was 30 so that was pretty cool. Um, and what else? That's like going back to those countries again. So amazing. So I went back and saw my friend Emily in the South of France. She's had two girls. So, I, you know, it was like a family there. We sat at a table and her two sisters lived there. And they're just lovely, you know, so simple. Life is so simple there. Um, and then Ghana, you know, I went back to see the kids. And well, I have like, Many more that call me mom, but mom, but uh, like four kids that I really sort of look after. Not as well as I could, for sure, but that I'm into contact with and try to make sure they have all their needs met. They're orphans, the, the ones that I'm close to have no parents. And you probably see some of them post on my Facebook wall sometimes. Yeah, <laughs> really sweet. Um, and at the same time this last year, I also decided it was time for me to step down from the board of my nonprofit because yeah, I was just pooped out. Like, it just it wasn't exciting to me anymore, and I'd rather work with the couple kids, just continue to support them. And we have this amazing board. Everyone's in in Texas, um, and so they just.